Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're having an awesome Friday. I'm having an awesome Friday. I just got home from work and today is the day that Taylor Swift has dropped her seventh studio album called Lover. I'm a huge Taylor Swift fan. I'm a total Swifty. 1989 is my go-to pop record. As of right now, even though it's five years old, uh, I'm still obsessed with it. And to kind of celebrate the occasion, I bought myself some Little Caesars pizza, yes. Okay, I just got home from work and I'm so hungry. I'm starving. I literally haven't eaten anything yet today. I have my Caesar dipping sauce for my pizza. I have some peach vodka and some 7-Up. It's Friday night. I'm bringing a jab to some Taylor Swift. Okay, so I haven't listened to this album yet. There are 18 tracks. That's right, 18 tracks. I haven't heard any of the tracks yet except me. And, uh, uh, what's the other song called? You Need to Calm Down. I also heard, uh, The Archer. And I briefly listened to Lover when it was released. Uh, but I don't think I listened to the whole thing. I don't really remember it, so I'm excited to get into that song as well. Uh, so let's get into it with track number one. I forgot that you existed. Honestly, though, I'm so... Oh Look at that. Look at that. I'm so hungry right now. All I've had to eat today was a smoothie for booster juice. That's all I've had to eat, and it's almost 6.30 in the evening. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I'm sorry, I have to dig into this right now. Mm -hmm. Little Caesars, hot and ready, $5.99, can't go wrong. Mm, look at that. Mm. Oh, look at that. I know there must be so many people out there who are having their own little Taylor Swift parties, their little Taylor Swift get-togethers. I can't be the only one. I mean, I'm not having near as much fun as you guys probably are. I mean, I'm by myself, but I imagine, you know, you guys are getting together. You're kind of sitting in the living room or your bedroom. You're listening, you know, track by track and kind of discussing each track. Mm. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be eating this whole pizza by myself. Oh, mm. so good. Okay, now let's get into it. Okay, so that was track number one, I Forgot That You Existed. A really interesting way to open up the album. And it was an enjoyable song. I mean, always when it comes to Taylor Swift songs, I always love the lyrics. Uh, she's always so shady. She's always so, um, you know, looking at you in my rearview mirror. You know, you didn't care about me. I don't care about you. Bye bye I just love that personality about her. She doesn't really you know, give a shit, she's not naive, she's not stupid, um, you know, she doesn't like to be played for a fool, I mean, obviously she's been in the game for so long now that it's probably very hard to manipulate her, and if you're not with her, you're against her, and so on and so forth, and, um, I just feel like this is a good song, and I enjoyed listening to it, uh, again, the lyrics were a plus for me, and yeah, so that was track number one, I Forgot That You Existed, and I feel like we've all been in one of those situations where, you know, someone comes along and you're like, oh, I totally forgot you existed. I mean, there are a couple people in my life who, you know, I think about occasionally, but then they come back into my life and it's like, oh yeah, it's you. I forgot that you were alive. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Anyway, um, so now let's move on to track number two, Cruel Summer. I just can't put this pizza down. Are you hungry? Are you hungry? Does this make you want to throw up? I don't know, maybe you're a vegan, sorry. Um... 
three, six, so there's eight pieces of pizza, eight slices. I'm gonna see if I can finish one slice per song. So by the end of track number eight, Paper Rings, my goal is to be done the pizza. <laughs> I don't normally do this, but honestly, like I said previous, I just got home from work and I'm just so hungry. Like I just, and this album's pretty long, it's over an hour. So I can't wait another hour to eat. Sorry if I'm talking with my mouth open while I'm eating. Anyway, um, track number two, Cruel Summer. I love it already. Okay, so that was track number two, Cruel Summer. Yes, okay, I love that song. Honestly, it's such a great bop. Very catchy, uh, just kind of gets you in the mood and you can't go wrong with it. You know, nothing more to say. Cruel Summer, uh, really good. Two thumbs up from me. You can tell I was having a lot of fun listening to it. Anyway, track number three, Lover. Oh, Pizza Slice. I didn't even finish my second one, okay. I have some catching up to do. We can leave the Christmas lights until January. Forever and ever and ever. Take me out and take me home. You're my, 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 my. Lover. We could let our friends crash in the living room. Okay, and that was track number three, Lover. A really beautiful song, and I can see why Taylor released a video for this uh, song. It's really nice, it's very chill, relaxing. It's just one of those songs where I kind of just want to sit back to and just let it fill my soul, let it fill my ears, and it's just a very beautiful song. It's one of those songs I feel like I will listen to late at night, by candlelight. I know that sounds stupid, but honestly, it's just a really beautiful song, and it's no coincidence that it's the title track, it's the title of the album, you know, and you know, I enjoyed it. So, anyway, so now let's move on to track number four The Man. The Man Needs His Pizza. <laughs> mm. For six bucks? I mean, you can't go wrong, let's be real. Mm -hmm. If I could eat pizza every day for the rest of my life, I would. I think everyone would. Even, you know, what? I don't care. Even if it's bad for me, I'm gonna do it. I don't really care. Honestly, pizza, one of the greatest inventions of all time. Whoever invented it, mm. And I'm reading a little bit of the editor's note here, and it reminded me that Taylor Swift is 29, so she'll be entering her 30s soon. And it's gonna be interesting to see 
and listen to how her upcoming albums are going to sound and how they're going to progress through the years. Um, I will say, a lot of Taylor's music recently has been a lot of drama, you know, relationships, you know, shadiness. I wonder if she will ever move on from that, you know, no shade thrown or anything, but I'm getting a little tired of it. I just kind of want her to become, you know, a full-fledged woman already. Not that she is, but I feel like there's still lots of high school drama surrounding her. I just kind of want her to move on and just... You know, hopefully her 30s are a lot better. I mean, she achieved so much success in her 20s. I just hope relationship-wise, her 30s are a lot better. I'm just hoping, you know, the best for her. So anyway, let's move on to track number four. The Man. I would be complex. I would be cool. Okay, that was track number four, The Bad, and uh, very powerful song. <sighs> so, clearly, I'm a bad surprise. Um, and I oftentimes take for granted that for simply being a bad, that I probably get away with a lot of things, and I might be given opportunities, or people might talk to me a certain way because I am a bad. And it's something I don't think about a lot, but it's something you hear about a lot, that a lot of times women have to put in double the effort a man does in her career, that it takes her longer to go up the ladder. Obviously there's the pay gap, men get paid more than women in a lot of instances, it still happens, and um, it's very hard for me to relate to, to the song, I will say, because I don't know, I mean, obviously I faced a lot of um, conflict and discrimination in my life too, being part of the LGBTQ community, um, so I know what it's like to have people look down on you or maybe have someone pass on you because of who they think you are. Um, so I know what that feels like, but it's always been in the back of my head. This goes back to a video I filmed a year ago when I first started my channel. Um, uh, you know, the struggles. I forget the title of the video, but it's at the very beginning of my channel, and it's something along the lines of, you know, what is it like to be a woman? I would like to know, because I don't know what it's like to be a woman in this day and age, and I would like to know. I would like to spend a week in a woman's shoes just to know what she has to go through every week, and I imagine it's different depending on the woman and where you come from and what you do, but I just don't know what that's like and I want to know what it feels like because it's very hard for me to understand. And I feel like this is a very powerful song. And even though she's very successful, she's very famous, she's achieved so much, she still has to write a song like this. She still has to express herself this way, even though she has reached the status that she does, or she has, if that makes sense. Anyway, enough rambling. Uh, so it was a good song. I can very much appreciate it. So that was track number four, The Bad, and now we will move on to track number five, The Archer. Been the brave, dark side. 
Okay, so that was track number five, The Archer, and I remember hearing the song for the first time, and I absolutely loved it, and it's one of my favorite tracks so far, and I imagine someone like Taylor with her success and everything she's accomplished, I imagine she can be quite lonely at times. Um, again, I don't know what that's like to be in the position that she's in, but I feel like a lot of people use you, a lot of people turn out to be snakes, a lot of friends who you thought were your besties are now your enemies, and I can't imagine to know what that does to you psychologically, and a lot of times I feel like you might be better off just alone at times, just by yourself, because that way no one can hurt you. Um, she's been the archer, she's been the prey, she's been everything, and I feel like at times she must seem like a very tortured soul. I mean, we could all be tortured souls. I'm a tortured soul as well, but um, I feel kind of sad for her at times. And listening to the song, you know, I, I just want her to be happy. Uh, hopefully she gets into, you know, a relationship of some kind. Hopefully she can able... To hold on to it, hopefully it turns into something very beautiful for her, um, because she deserves it. Hopefully she's not continuously chasing her uh, Prince Charming on his white horse for the rest of her life. Anyway, so now let's move on to track number six. I think he knows. What does he know? Does it involve pizza? Does it involve peach vodka? Ooh. I swear I'm not tipsy right now. But by track 18 I might be. <laughs> So let's get into it. I think he knows his footprints on the sidewalk lead to where I can't stop. It's like I'm 17, nobody understands. Got my heart beating. Yes. Slipping down 16, I'm a new black. Oh, I mean, I want you to rest my soul. I ain't gonna tell him I think he knows. Good ones never wait. Very true. Okay, now it's track number six. I think he knows, and as you can tell, a lot of fun. I have fun listening to it. Um, it's very bubblegum pop. It's very teenage-like, and you know what? My guilty pleasure is when Taylor goes back to, you know, very bubblegum pop lyrics. Um, something you'd hear in, like, an 80s rom-com. Something you'd hear, you know, Britney Spears circa 1990 eight or 1999 just very bubblegum pop you know i'm a sucker for that kind of music and i love that song a lot of fun um so now let's move on to track number seven miss americana and the heartbreak prince i'm pretty excited with a title like that i mean i'm gonna drink to that title no my pizza's just sitting here all cold and lonely i'm on track seven so technically, I should have finished seven pieces already, but I'm only on my third piece. <laughs> so that plan failed. I still have five more pieces left, so I'm getting pretty full, to be honest, so. Mm. You know I adore you, I'm crazy for you, and I was at 16, lost in a film scene, American glory, faded before me, now I'm feeling hopeless, picked up my prom dress, and ran for my life. So that was track number seven, Miss Americana and the Heartbreak Prince. And this is probably one of my favorite tracks on the record, lyric-wise. Um, there's a lot going on here, and I feel like this whole allegory of high school, the popular kids, and the less popular kids, 
the whispering, the gossip, the talking smack. I feel like it's a metaphor for also adulthood and how it kind of continues into adulthood and how immature adults can be. How men in particular, they can be very immature. Boys will be boys. Where are all the wise men? Where are all the intelligent men? Why are they acting like boys? Um, a lot of people hanging their head in shame, being judged, gossiping. And it's a little tragic because I even experienced it to this day that adults can be just as gossipy and catty and bitchy and annoyed just like teenagers. Teenagers have this, sorry if you're a teenager, there's a stigma that teenagers are ignorant, they're bratty, they talk smack, but honestly this continues on into adulthood. It's not just teenagers, and not all teenagers are like that obviously. It's just a really horrible thing and I hate gossip. I, for one, stay away from gossip. I know lots of people who come to me and they gossip, but it's a very unfortunate thing. I also feel like a lot of people are judged for a particular person that they're dating. And a lot of people will shun you. A lot of people will talk about your relationship behind your back and they'll say, why is she dating him? Why is he dating her? Um, and all you want to do is be with your sweetheart. All you want to do is date this person, but so many people are saying it's wrong, a lot of people are making fun of it, and you become miserable, and you're like, why are these people so nasty towards me and the person I'm dating, and then you start crying, and it's like a whole Romeo and Juliet thing, and anyway, that's the impression I got from the song, that was my interpretation of it. Um, I'm sure other people interpreted, interpreted? I'm sure a lot of people interpreted it, I, why am I struggling with that word? Anyway, that's what I got out of the song, so yeah, Miss Americana and the Heartbreak Prince. So now we will move on to track number eight, Paper Rigs. <laughs> Okay, so that was track number eight, Paper Rings. Yes, yes, yes. Another bop, another total bop. I love it. Amazing, wonderful, fantastic, a lot of fun. And I'm kind of picking up on the theme of this record. Definitely the want and need to just fall madly in love with someone. Just wanting to find that one person to settle down, to be serious, but still having that conflict along the way, the uncertainty, the drama, the gossip, just wanting to find your lover. That's what this album is. Finding your lover, discovering your lover, wanting to marry your lover, and just wanting to be loved. At the same time, combating all the hate and the gossip and the anxiety and the snakes. Um, so yeah, that was track number eight, Paper Rings. So now we will move on to track number nine, Cornelia Street. Ooh. They were in the backseat, drunk on something stronger than the drinks in the bar. We put a fresh page on the desk, filling in the blanks as we go. We were car sharks playing games. I thought you were leading me on. Then you called, showed your hand. Okay, so that was track number nine, Cornelia Street, and I don't know where this Cornelia Street is. I don't know if it's a real street. I don't know if it's some kind of metaphor. I don't know if I'm an idiot. I don't know if I should be picking up on something, but this is, honestly, I'm feeling a little down right now because I feel like this song or this album in general is wanting to find your lover and that is what I'm trying to do right now and it's very difficult and you know what I just want to have a special relationship with someone and I don't right now and it sucks and 
it's a little sad. So in this song in particular, I just want to find that special someone to kind of share my life with, to share an apartment with, to walk down the street with, to just, okay, I'm getting all gushy now, I'll stop. Um, anyway, so now let's move on to track number 10, Death by a Thousand Cuts, you don't say. <laughs> Okay, so that was track number 10, Death by a Thousand Cuts, and I have never listened to a full Taylor Swift album before except for 1989 and Reputation. I know what's wrong with me, I'm a total Taylor Swift fan, yet I haven't listened to her previous work, her older work. What's wrong with me, but don't worry, coming soon to a theater near you. No, that was so stupid. Anyway, um, I noticed that she's singing about alcohol a lot on this album. In quite a few of the songs, she brings up alcohol, the bar, getting drunk, what have you. And that kind of coincides with my opinion. It usually coincides with loneliness. It usually coincides with some kind of struggle of some kind. And what I'm picking up from this album is some kind of battle, some kind of conflict between you know, wanting someone and then getting dumped, wanting someone but then being judged for wanting that person, and I just feel like there's lots of judgment and fear, but want and passion, and I just get the impression that from this album that's like you want something so bad, but for some reason you're just not getting it, like a lover, and it's very tragic, it's sad, I'm getting a very tragic vibe from this album so far. Though it's about lover, a lover, wanting love, giving love, I feel like it's also very sad at the same time. And I feel like we've all experienced that. And you only need to listen to the first 10 tracks to kind of know what I'm talking about. And to read the lyrics as well. I highly suggest reading the lyrics as well. Anyway, um, so now let's move on to track number 11. London boy. I would love to be a London boy. Just throwing it out there. Uh, you know, just riding London. I would love to ride your scooter. And that was track number 11, London Boy, and I want to go to London now. Ugh, that's one of my dreams, honestly. I've never left Canada before, I need to leave Canada, honestly. I need to explore the world, and London is one of the places I need to go. It just sounds like so much fun. Anyone watching, do you want to take me to London? <laughs> just kidding. Do you live in London? Do you want to take me? I want to live there. No, I honestly want to live there one day. Um, so that was London Boy, a great song. Um, you know, no complaints. Honestly, I don't really have any complaints with this album so far. There haven't been any tracks that I disliked yet. There are obviously tracks I like more than others, but there isn't a single track on here that I just don't like or I hate or I'll never listen to again. I like all these songs. Um, it's a good album so far. I don't know how it ranks with other Taylor Swift albums. Like I said, I haven't listened to all her other albums yet. But you know what? I'm having fun. Having fun and also, you know, feeling some uncomfortable feelings. Um, hence the title Lover and all the emotions going along with it. But you know what? I'm enjoying the album so far. Anyway, so now let's move on to track number 12. Soon You'll Get Better, featuring Dixie Chicks. Yes. The buttons of my coat were tangled in my hair. And I say to you, ooh, I, soon you'll get better. Ooh, I, soon you'll get better. Cause you have to.
Okay, that was track number 12. So you'll get better featuring the Dixie Chicks. I'm surprised it took this long for Taylor to collab with the Dixie Chicks. What happened to the Dixie Chicks? I mean, we kind of know what happened to them way back when. You can read into it. It was a little unfortunate, but um, honestly, they need to release some new music. But um, soon you'll get better. <sighs> yeah. I mean, obviously, a lot of people, including myself, think that whatever they're feeling in the moment, whether it be sadness or, you know, anxiety or heartache, um, some kind of breakup or divorce or questioning yourself why you're not good enough, what have you, you feel like it's going to last forever and you'll never love again, but soon you'll get better and I like to think soon I'll get better and it's not like I'm you know in any negative situation right now or negative mindset but I feel like soon hopefully the clouds will clear and I will have what I've been searching for all this time and soon it'll get better and it'll get better for you as well um you just need to stay on the positive side and be optimistic and hopefully it works out for you Okay, so that was track number 13, False God. There are children crying outside my apartment. Go away, go away, go away. As I was saying, uh, that was track number 13, False God. And my impression of the song was that you might be in a relationship with someone or hooking up with someone and you know that it might not be right for you, you might be thinking it's not going to work out in the end, that you're not a right match, but you're kind of in denial, it's a false god, um, you know, you're just kind of going with the flow and you might think that it might be wrong in the end, but you're still going to follow it, it's blind faith, you're just going to trust that it's going to work out. That was my impression of the song. Um, and I enjoyed it again with the rest of this album. Um, so now let's move on to track number 14. <sighs> you need to calm down. Seriously, girl, you need to calm down. And that was track number 14, You Need to Calm Down. And was there to say, a total bop. I loved it from the first time I heard it. I love the music video. I like what this uh, song stands for. Um, a lot of people, I mean, you go to the music videos for the song and you see all the dislikes for it. It just goes to show you kind of where we are right now in the world, how there is still so much animosity towards a certain group of people and you know what? I love this song even more for that. So good job, Taylor. Thanks for standing up for something you believe in. Uh, really good. You really need to calm down. Anyway, so now let's uh, move on to track number 15, After a Glow. Okay, that was track number 15, Afterglow, and 
I will say that this is probably my least favorite song on the record. I just wasn't really feeling it, and I was just kind of zoning out as I was listening to it, which I never want to say to a Taylor Swift song, but I honestly just did really care for it. Um, it was decent, I suppose. It's not horrible by any means, but compared to all the other songs on the record, I just didn't really care for the song, unfortunately. Um, so now let's move on to track number 16, me featuring a Brendan Yuri of Panic at the Disco. Yes! I promise that you'll never find another like me. Okay, so that was track number 16, Me, the lead single off the record, and I will admit, when I first heard the song, I was kind of lukewarm towards it, but as I listened to it a couple more times, I fell in love with it. A lot of people, even to this day, they still don't like this song, they think it's really bad, they think it's horrible, they think it's annoying, but... Who cares about them? Anyway, I think it's a fun song. You know what? I have a lot of fun whenever I hear this song played at a store or when I'm, you know, in a car or I'm just on my own. You know what? It's just a lot of fun. It's very pure and innocent. And I'm a little disappointed they took out the lyric of, hey, kids, spelling is fun. It was a little, you know, stupid. But honestly, that's what kind of what made this song so fun. It is a stupid song. Let's be real. Um, it's talking about me, you know, that's the best part of me, whatever. Um, it's a little, you know, stupid, I will admit. But, you know, it's fun at the same time. And I'm glad Taylor chose it as the lead single. I feel like, though, this song doesn't really represent the album very well. I feel like it was just thrown in to be a lead single. Um, a lead popular song to hit number one, hopefully, which I don't think it did. Um, so, though, I feel like it doesn't really fit in with the rest of the album. We kind of went on this journey... And now that we're kind of wrapping up this album, we kind of went through all this drama, all this heartache, all this love, all this searching, all this tenderness, and now we're kind of reaching the end, and we're kind of just celebrating now. Me, hey, love yourself, what have you. I mean, that's kind of what I'm picking up. Uh, so now we have two tracks left. We have, we're have we almost at the end, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my god. Um, so now let's move on to track number 17. It's nice to have a friend. School bell rings, walk me home, sidewalk chalk, covered in snow, you pass me a note, sleeping in tents, it's nice to have a friend. Light pink sky, up on the roof. Church bells ring, carry me home, rise on the ground, looks like snow. Okay, and that was track number 17, It's Nice to Have a Friend, and I know there are probably people listening to this record, maybe even this video, and you might feel like you don't have anyone to talk to, you're not in a relationship, you don't have any friends, you feel like a loner, you feel like an outcast, you feel like you can't really express yourself to anyone, and you're trapped and alone, um, and... Sometimes I feel like that. Sometimes there are people who I feel like I can't talk to. Sometimes I can't express what I really want to say. And it's nice to have that one person who you can openly talk to, who you can sit next to, who you can confess to, who you can be around, and you can be yourself around. Whether it be someone you're dating, a lover, or a friend of some kind, or a coworker, or, you know, someone over a hotline, um, it's always nice to have someone to talk to, someone you can trust in, and it's so hard to trust people nowadays. I feel like, in general, it's always been hard to trust people, and I'm coming to realize that. I'm sure it took Taylor, um, quite a while to realize that as well. It's, you know, you can't trust everyone, and it's nice to have that one person, that one friend that you can rely on, so... 
It's a nice to have a friend. This is a nice song. I enjoyed it. Uh, so now we have come to the last track on the record. Track number 18, Daylight Just As The Sun Is Setting. I'm sure you know this as this video progresses that it's getting darker. So track number 18, Daylight. Love was as cruel as the cities I lived in. And that is so true. And I'm finally realizing that now, and it's took, taken me quite a while, and I was in a pretty dark spot, like most people are throughout their life. Many different dark parts in my life, and I feel like I was able to step into the daylight, out of the darkness for many of those situations, and now I feel like what I went through, it doesn't affect me anymore. I don't let it affect me. And I only want, like Taylor, said, uh, Taylor Swift said, to be defined by what I love, who I love, and what I truly believe in. I don't want it to be defined by my mistakes, or I should say, I don't mind being defined by mistakes because that has made me into the man who I am. I just don't want to be defined by the failure that he failed and that's it. I want to be defined by he took chances and he was willing to sacrifice everything. And at the end of the day, he's able to live with a smile on his face and go throughout his life, greedy people, having fun, and not giving a shit what people have to say because even to this day I feel like people still think of me a certain way they still talk about me behind my back and I don't give a shit about those people I get to live every day in my life in happiness and joy and though I feel miserable at times and I feel like I'm down and I feel like I just fucking hate myself I feel like I'm so much more than what I was back then. When I was back then, I felt like I was so weak. I was so innocent. I didn't know anything. People took advantage of me. People manipulated me. People made me do things I didn't want to do. People made me say horrible things that I would never want to say to anyone in my life. And I look back now and I feel like such a stronger person. And I get to live every day in sunshine, in the daylight, and I'm so happy for that, and hopefully one day you will too, if you still feel like that you can't get out of the darkness. One day too, I have full faith that you will be able to walk in the daylight as well, and when you do, it will be a wonderful warm feeling that will light up your life, and it will be amazing. And that kind of wraps up the whole album in full, Lover by Taylor Swift. And this was an amazing album. Again, I haven't read the reviews for this album. I haven't watched other reactions. I don't know what people are saying. I haven't been on Twitter. I haven't been on Facebook. I don't know how people are reacting to this album. I don't care what those people are saying. I don't care if everybody is having negative notions about this record. I'm loving it. I enjoyed it. I think it's a very strong record and I feel like it's going to speak to a lot of people in this day and age. And it's spoken to me and 
I'm loving it. There's not a single track on here that I completely despise or hate. I love each and every one of the tracks, and it really does give you hope. Um, even though you feel like you're losing or you're wanting that special someone in your life or you're wanting a lover and you're not getting it. Um, this kind of, you know, puts it in perspective and kind of shines light on it and um, really kind of, you know, tells you that, you know, there's going to be a very optimistic future for you. Anyway, enough of that rambling. R rambling? Oh my god. Okay, I need to wrap this up. My pizza. Oh my god, my poor pizza. So... I only finished three pieces. I actually haven't touched my pizza since probably track number seven or track number eight. I mean, that's how into the album I was. And my drink is completely done, and I would be lying if I said I wasn't a little tipsy. Anyway, leave your input, leave your thoughts on the album. What did you think of it? Uh, what's your favorite track? Um, I love the whole album. Honestly, I can't really give you a favorite track right now. I have to kind of re-listen to the record. Anyway, give me your opinion, your thoughts. Um, you can find me on Instagram, you can find me on Twitter. Give me suggestions of albums I should listen to next. I listen to any albums from any decade. 